everyone! Welcome to Film Chat. In this review, we're going to review Passenger 57. Subscribe right away, then watch the video. Hello. Good day everyone. Today I'm going to recap an American action thriller film called Passenger 57. Are you ready? Let's watch together. Charles Rain is a notorious British terrorist who has orchestrated multiple bombings, assassinations, and other heinous crimes. He even tried to kill the Kafna. But despite his criminal record, he has never been captured. The truth is that Charles is also an escape artist, who uses his power and deception to elude the authorities. The first scene, we see him in a surgery room with several doctors surrounding him. Turns out Charles is about to undergo a procedure to completely change his facial appearance. This is the tenth time he is about to do so. When the head doctor inquires if he needs any anesthesia to bear the pain, Charles refuses, stating that he likes pain. He wants to undergo the surgery in a completely conscious state. Meanwhile, some cops have gathered outside the building. Someone has tipped them off about Charles's whereabouts, and they are here to storm the surgery room and finally apprehend him. But before they start the mission, the chief cop warns everyone that Charles is a dangerous assassin who is capable of killing several men single-handedly. He's a right troublesome bloke. He knows how to give them to beans. You know him, China what? After a while, they slowly make their way to the 13th floor where the surgery is about to take place. Unfortunately for them, Charles is well prepared. As soon as the cops enter the room, he finishes off the chief doctor, dodges the barrage of bullets, and then runs through the corridor. Charles then smashes through a glass window and jumps out of the building. And despite free falling from the 13th floor, he lands perfectly without any injuries. He is even able to run at full speed, as if jumping from buildings is his forte. However, no matter how fast he runs, the cops have cars. They eventually corner him. In this way, the notorious Charles Ryan is finally apprehended, after 15 years of elusiveness. Okay, how did he jump out of that building? They better explain that. Shin then shifts to an airplane, where a beautiful flight attendant, Marta, is checking on the passengers one by one. Everything appears to be going smoothly, when suddenly, a shady-looking guy pulls out a gun and takes her hostage. He threatens to kill her if his demands are not met. In response, Marta casually kicks him in the leg, giving a nearby passenger enough time to take the gun away from him. After this everyone starts clapping, and it's finally revealed that the whole thing was just a practice session to train the flight attendants in self-defense. Somehow I doubt the right course of is action is to kick the guy with the gun in the leg. On an airplane, the shady looking guy is John Cutter, decorated soldier, and retired Secret Service agent who is known for his tough stance on high-level crimes. After a while, the general manager of Atlantic International Airlines, Sly Del Vecchio, arrives and takes John away. It appears as if the two are good friends. Sly asks him to get back in the business and serve the nation once again, but John refuses. He mentions that he no wants longer. to risk his life for others. Nonetheless, Sly offers him a job as the head of the counter-terrorism unit in Atlantic International Airlines. John thinks for a while, and finally accepts, when he is told that he only has to work twice a month. I thought my life was just about getting kicked in the balls by hot flight attendants, but guess this'll do. Elsewhere Charles is escorted to his cell, where his attorney is waiting for him. The latter reveals that the authorities are planning to take him to California and execute him in the chair. The only way to avoid it is if Charles leads insanity. Unfortunately, the notorious terrorist doesn't take the suggestion in good terms, and he bashes the attorney against the table, claiming I am not his sign. In the next scene, we see a shirtless John meditating, reminiscing about his past. The movie then flashes back to a few years ago, where John and his late wife are shopping in a convenience store. Suddenly a robber arrives there, and attempts to steal money from the counter. As a man of integrity, John tries to stop him, but the robber holds his wife hostage. Everyone in the store backs away, but despite this, the robber shoots the poor woman. John eventually kills him, but when he returns to check on his wife, she is already dead. The incident traumatized him so much that he quit his work as a special agent and isolated himself for months. In the present, John gets ready for his first day at work. He has to stay anonymous and guard a large Lockhead airline with almost 200 passengers on it. John is assigned to seat number 57, hence name of the movie. Coincidentally, Charles and two FBI agents also board the plane, indicating that the flight is heading for California. One of the flight attendants is Marta, while the other one is a beautiful young girl named Sabrina. Meanwhile, a little boy sees Charles and fires an imaginary bullet at him. In response, the cold-hearted killer pretends to dead. However, 
when he shoots the boy back, his cuffs are revealed, which alarms the passengers nearby him. They start wondering if the flight is safe, and Sabrina assures them that there is nothing to worry about. She calls a suspicious-looking staff in the lower deck and asks him to send over the special service. The guy obliges and puts a metal briefcase on the waiting tray. At the same time John, who is annoyed by his chatty seatmate, gets up and heads to the restroom to have some alone time. Once he locks the door, Sabrina retrieves the content from the metal box, and it turns out to be a gun. She then proceeds towards the two unsuspecting FBI agents and shoots them in the head, much to everyone's horror. After Charles unlocks his cuffs, three of his goons emerge out of their seats and threaten everyone to remain silent. Here it is revealed that Charles had everything planned all along. When he got to know that the agents were escorting him in a commercial airline, he immediately hired some people to hijack it. In the next scene, Charles heads to the cockpit and shoots one of the pilots dead to assert his dominance. Then he announces over the radio that they are going to change courses and that the plane is officially hijacked. However, if the passengers remain and obey his orders, no harm will come to them. John who is still in the restroom overhears all of this and gets terrified. He somehow manages to get a hold of the plane's onboard phone and explain the situation to his friend Sly. Following this he expertly subdues one of the hijackers, takes his gun and then uses him as a shield to confront Charles. The latter also grabs Marta creating an intense showdown between the two. However Charles soon lets go of the flight attendant. John shoots an innocent man to prove his point. He then fires a shot towards John, but it accidentally kills one of his henchmen. Taking advantage of the commotion, John and Marta run away from there, enter the elevator, and take it all the way down to the cargo hold. There they come across the suspicious-looking guy from earlier and inquire if he knows anything about the hijackers. The man pretends to be shocked, but at an opportune moment, he whips out a knife and tries attacking John. The two then engage in an intense duel, and in the end, our protagonist manages to knock the bad guy out with an impressive kick. If only he was that good at doing his taxes. After tying him up, Marta and John head to the avionics section of the plane, where the latter proposes that they dump all the fuel and force an emergency landing. Marta strictly opposes the idea, as it could easily result in a crash. But when John explains that it is their only way, she allows him to proceed. Once the fuel is almost empty, the two head towards the landing gear, as it is the best place to jump out of the plane without sustaining many injuries. Fortunately, the plan works, and when Charles learns that they are running low on fuel, he requests the pilots to make an emergency, landing at the nearest airport. Meanwhile at the Atlanta International Headquarters, Sly and his superiors find out that the hijacked plane is preparing to land. A small airstrip in Lake Lucille, Louisiana hence, without wasting any time Sly boards a chopper and heads to the location. Elsewhere John and Marta are waiting for the plane to land so that they can jump out of it. A few moments later, the plane eventually comes to a halt, but when the two are about to jump, one of the hijackers ambushes them from behind. John is pushed out of the plane while Marta is taken hostage. Once again two cops arrive at the scene and immediately arrest John. Despite his best attempts to claim he was the head of security on the plane, doesn't change the fact that you didn't do your taxes buddy, as he is being escorted away. Charles makes contact with the control tower, and the chief sheriff Mr. Biggs answers him. Charles immediately makes his demands clear that the plane needs to be refueled inside 10 minutes. In return he promises to release 100 passengers. When the sheriff refuses to accept the deal, Charles kills 5 passengers to make a statement. This terrifies Mr. Biggs, and he finally gives the green light to refuel the plane. After a while, John is brought to the control tower, and even Mr. Biggs thinks that he is one of the bad guys. His doubts are finally confirmed when the cunning Charles calls him once again and lies that John is one of his men who escaped after betraying him. Hearing this Mr. Biggs orders his officers to lock John in the basement, but the latter impressively fights them off, grabs a police motorcycle, and heads to the airstrip. Meanwhile, after the plane is refueled, Charles releases 100 passengers, as promised. However, taking advantage of the commotion, he also sneaks out with this suspicious-looking guy and another man. The three then head to a nearby fair. At the control tower, the FBI finally arrives and asks Mr. Bay to give a full report on the situation. When the sheriff mentions that they had beat up and caught John Cutter, the head agent gets angry and finally reveals that John is one of them tax evasion. Be damned elsewhere. At the carnival fair, Charles and his men are secretly tailed by I'm John who is still adamantly. His cover is blown, and one of the hijackers attempts to shoot him but misses. An innocent person takes the resulting bullet. in full-blown chaos. Meanwhile John climbs up a Ferris wheel, and one of the hijackers follows him. There the two engage in a small tussle, which ends with the man being chucked off the Ferris wheel. 
resulting in his immediate death if only he were that good at fighting off his taxes. After this John jumps onto the unsuspecting Charles and eventually subdues him as the FBI and the local officer take him away. Sly Del Baccio also arrives and congratulates his friend for successfully tackling the terrorist. However little did they know that the problem is far from over Charles threatens the officers that if he isn't let his goons on the plane will start killing the passengers one by one. An enraged John tries to negotiate but to no him. avail. So with no options left, the FBI and the other officials decide to let Charles back onto the plane. However they have an idea. They will deploy snipers on top of a nearby building. And as soon as Charles and the other hijackers appear in sight, they will be shot dead. Why not just kill Charles in the first place? His goons are idiots. They'll just give up. If he's dead, John is ordered to lead the entire mission. In the next scene, two FBI agents lead Charles to the plane. But as they are about to enter, the snipers start shooting them instead. It turns out that the suspicious looking has guy killed the earlier, original sniper. Now gunning enemies. down all the FBI agents soon. A shootout between the hijackers and the agents ensues, which results in several deaths, including that of the suspicious looking guy. The plane also starts getting away, but John is not going to give up so easily. He along with Sly gets into Mr. Biggs's car and asks him to chase the plane. The idea is to grab hold of the retractable landing gear and enter the plane through that. Although the stunt is an extremely dangerous one, it is a piece of cake Mr. Cutter. He effortlessly clings onto the landing gear like it's his daily bread and butter. Once inside, he goes to the cargo, hold and kills one of the hijackers. Then he sneaks onto Sabrina from behind and knocks her out. Now the only hijacker left, standing is the notorious Charles himself. British before confronting him. However, John heads to the cockpit and asks the passengers to change course and head back to the likely SEAL airstrip. After this, the final showdown begins. Despite John being a trained fighter, Charles matches him stride for stride. A stray bullet in their fight shatters one of the windows, causing the loss of air pressure in the plane. The main door is also blown out, and Marta, who is standing just next to it, is left hanging for dear life. Unfortunately, John acts quickly and takes Charles near the broken exit. The two of them exchange some final blows, and in the end, John prevails by kicking the terrorist out of the plane. With him now dead, the madness is finally over. While the passengers celebrate by busting out some cringe moves, John then contacts his superiors at the control tower and informs them that he has taken down Charles, making them rejoice in happiness. In the final scene, the plane finally lands, and all the passengers are escorted to safety. John who is fed up with all the commotion and his taxes doesn't even bother facing the reporters and simply walks away with his new girlfriend Marta. The movie ends as Sly talks to the reporters and proudly says that he was in charge of the entire operation. Subscribe.